Like most of us, I suspect, I didn't give much thought to organising my photo library when I first started out. In fact, I can categorically state that I gave it absolutely no thought whatsoever. I just dragged the photos off the SD card and stuck them in a folder called, can you guess? Yep, photos. If I'd known then that I'd end up with such a massive collection of digital photographs, I might have taken a bit more care. But at least you guys can learn from my experience. Take control of your photo library now and you'll save yourself endless hours of inconvenience in the future. Or as Albert Einstein once said, out of clutter, find simplicity. Over the 25 odd years I've been shooting digital, my photo library has grown somewhat and despite having recently been thinned out a bit, I now have 221,000 images in my main catalogue. I bitterly regret not being more organised when I started out because friends have been playing catch up ever since. So help yourself by getting organised from the beginning and life will be so much easier. The key to this organisation and building in redundancy to your setup is to use a pyramid system. At the base of the pyramid is files and folders because this is what changes the least often. Above it is metadata because while this doesn't need to change, it can be added to or altered. And at the top is software because it's highly likely that the apps you use will change over the years. Build your photo library from that bottom tier up and you'll have a flexible system that can adapt as your needs change. So let's talk about the base of that pyramid, files and folders. The key to flexible photo organization is to make your photo library as platform and application agnostic as possible. What I mean by that is that if you put in place a solid file structure, you'll find it immeasurably easier to move between different photo apps and even between different operating systems. It all starts with the folder structure and the absolute key here is to remain totally consistent. The most common folder structure is year, month, day, because it makes finding a specific date so easy. Personally speaking, I find it easy when I nest those folders, but you can, if you wish, simply have a list of date stamped folders in one directory with no nesting. Alternatively, you can organize your folders by location, by subject, by project, by client, by style, by camera, or even by a combination of these. You could, for instance, have a folder structure such as USA slash California slash 2024 slash landscapes. As long as you stick to that structure, it's equally workable. There's no right or wrong system here, so pick the one that makes the most sense to you and then never change it. Personally speaking, I utilize a tiered year slash date camera folder structure, but you do you. One decision you should make early on is whether you're gonna rename your files or not. When I started out, I chose not to rename any of my photo files and I freely admit I regret not doing so. This is for a couple of reasons, but the biggest issue is that due to the rotating file naming system in my camera, I have multiple photos with the exact same file name. Renaming your photographs as you import them is something that you can easily automate with software. I use the Hazel app for Mac to import my photos and while I don't use this feature, it can rename files on import. I've talked about Hazel at length before, so check out my video here to find out more. Adobe Lightroom can rename files on import, but only if you're using the move option rather than the add. You can choose from a set of preset file names or create your own bespoke one using an extensive set of options from simple file sequences to dimensions, camera, ISO or even altitude. Capture One has a similar flexible renaming facility 
which can be applied during the photo import process. Simply choose one of the built-in presets or create your own bespoke file name by dragging and dropping your chosen options to the format box. You can also use a file rename tool prior to importing your images. Rename X, better rename 11 and better find a rename 12 for Mac are all great. And on Windows Eagle file renamer, file rename the basic and bulk rename the utility are all great too. Just don't go renaming your files after you've imported them. If you're using a database driven catalog system, such as the one in Lightroom Classic. So that's the base of our organizational pyramid. Now let's go to that middle layer, metadata. I mentioned how lousy I was at organizing my photos when I first started out, and the same is true for managing metadata. Metadata is, of course, extra information embedded within a photo or in a partner file that could be read, analyzed, and searched on by photo apps. Metadata ranges from core information such as aperture and exposure time, all the way through to your lens's serial number and its vibrance setting. Most of this data is recorded automatically within the photograph when you take it, and pretty much all photo editing apps can read it. You can see just how much metadata can be stored in a photo with the Jimple website. Just drop a photo, on the image metadata page and then scroll down to see the vast number of attributes. Having access to metadata is a hugely advantageous thing for organizing your photo library since you can perform searches on any EXIF data, all high ISO images for instance or all long exposures. Depending on your camera model, there may be important gaps in the data and you may wish to add additional information to it as you're processing your shots. For instance, my Fujifilm X-T4 does not have a GPS chip built into it, which means that I have to manually add location data to my shots after I've imported them. A surprisingly large number of cameras lack GPS, including the Sony A7R4, the Canon EOS R6, the Nikon D850, and the Panasonic GH5 II. So it's not unique to my X-T4. Fortunately, there are workarounds. I can highly recommend you add GPS data to your photographs if it isn't included automatically because it's one of the most useful search metrics after the calendar date. You can add this GPS data in several ways. In Lightroom, go to the Map module, search for the location you took the photographs, and then simply drag your photos onto that location on the map. It's a fast feature that can add GPS coordinates to 300 photos in under 30 seconds. Capture One has only very basic location support with access to GPS information in the Info tab. Even worse, you can't edit it. If you want to add coordinates, you'll have to do it manually using an external app. If you want semi-automated GPS tracking for non-GPS enabled cameras, and even for film cameras for that matter, then I can highly recommend Geotag Photos 2, which is available for both iOS and Android. You use Geotag Photos on location to track your GPS coordinates, then output that data in a GPX file, which can be imported into Adobe Lightroom or Photo Mechanic and add extremely precise location data to all of your shots. There is, of course, other metadata you might want to include in a photo that is not part of the information recorded automatically by the camera. Your star rating, for instance, or keywords or tags. To save this data with your photographs, you need to use sidecar files. Sidecar files, which come with a .xmp file extension, store extra metadata, and while they are supposed to be a universal format, your photo editor may store information in a sidecar file that is not accessible to another app. For instance, Lightroom Classic stores your developed settings in a .xmp sidecar file, but that does not mean that if you open that photo in Capture One, it will replicate the positions of the various sliders. In fact, I found Capture One doesn't read any metadata from the Lightroom Classic .xmp sidecar files, not even the star ratings while DxO Photo Lab does. As far as I'm concerned, the most useful metadata you can store in sidecar files is keyword information. Keywords can, if used consistently, 
proved to be the single most useful organizational tool in any photo library. The easiest way to add them to your photos is during the import process, because you can create a generalized set of keywords that apply to all of the shots, i.e. location, time of day, theme, etc. Then you can quickly flick through your shots, adding more specific keywords, i.e. bird, sunset, flower, surfer, rainbow, etc. My advice is to get as granular as possible because you'll be cursing yourself next time you're looking for that moody selfie you took that one evening. If you never bothered adding keywords, you can do it retrospectively, either manually or using an automated app of some kind. If you have a large library and you're not doing time for murder, and therefore have a bit of time on your hands, then manual keywording isn't really gonna be an option. I've tested a Lightroom Classic plugin called Any Vision, which uses Google's AI image analysis service to add keywords directly to entire catalogs in Lightroom. Full review up here. I've tested both On One Keyword and XI Photo in the past and found them both completely useless for adding anything close to a worthwhile keyword. So that brings us to the top of the organizational pyramid, which is software, the apps you use to harness all that organizational data. The reason these are at the top of the pyramid is because they're the most likely to change. And if you implemented my suggestions for files and folders and metadata, then it's a lot easier to switch applications. Software used to manage photographs and videos is called a Digital Asset Manager, or DAM for short. Lightroom is a combined DAM and RAW editor, and it excels in both roles having an extremely capable database-driven catalog system and one of the best raw editing suites on the market. A free alternative to Lightroom is Adobe Bridge. This is a brilliant asset manager that includes a lot of the functionality of Lightroom and can be legally used without needing an Adobe subscription. If you're a Mac user, I'm a big fan of Peak2 by Sign. This is a clever asset manager that can index multiple photo libraries, including Lightroom catalogs, and effectively combine them into one single easily searchable catalog. Mylio is a great cross-platform choice that does a similar job to Peak2, but it is subscription-based and costs 99 bucks a year. The various ACDC apps for both Windows and Mac aren't great for photo editing, but they're decent asset managers with a comprehensive list of useful search and photo management tools. If you're using a simple folder and file organizational method, you can of course just use a file manager on your Mac or Windows system alongside your raw editor of choice. And finally, if all your organizational work has fallen short and you still can't find the photo or photos you need when you need them, then there's always AI. I recently reviewed Peak2 Search, which is a neat little AI-based image search tool for Lightroom Classic and Capture One, and it's made by Syme. It indexes all of your photographs using AI and enables you to use conversational search language to find the shots you're after. In fact, it's fair to say it's helped to make up for many of my failings in the organizational department. So that is the organizational pyramid building a strong base with file and folder naming supplementing it with strong metadata and keywording and then finally leveraging the power of the software to access that organizational information if you're just starting out then you can save yourself so much hassle by getting it right from the outset but if you're just trying to kick a large library into shape then it's never too late to start and that'll do us for this video guys are you an organizational anarchist letting everything run wild or a nazi keeping it all tightly locked down let me know in the comments section below if you got value from this content then do please give it a like and consider subscribing to me and channel for more photo video and drone related content from me till the next time guys ta ta